Well, hello everyone. I thought maybe you would like to join me in making some apple crisp. Apple crisp happens to be one of my husband's probably top five favorite things to be able to have as just a snack, you know, like a dessert type thing. We usually make it um, on a cold night. <laughs> it's so wonderful and yummy and just smells so good. And there's nothing like something warm when it's really cold out. But I don't know if you have ever used one of these contraptions. I bought this years and years ago and it has been a lifesaver for me that it peel, peels and, and um, cores the apples and slices them so that all I have to do is put them in the bowl or put them in whatever I am hap happen to be making. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start peeling and in the meantime what I did is I added one cup of flour and one cup of of oatmeal, uh, the dry oatmeal. And according to the recipe I use, it says that you can be regular or it could be quick oats. So I never buy regular oats. I always buy quick oats, so I've never really used anything but that. And then the other thing it's gonna take is one stick of butter plus three more um, tablespoons. I believe they're tablespoons, yes and then one and a half cups of brown sugar. So I will have the recipe for you in the description below and let's see how to do this. All you need to do is put your apple on this end. I tend to make sure that the stem is taken out because otherwise what happens sometimes is it, it can get jammed up in there and this one's being stubborn. And we just And then this just pulls right off. And there is your apple. And all you need to do is slice it. And I will put it in a nine by 13 pan that I have already sprayed with cooking spray and just put them in there. Take that little piece out. Take our core off and go back. Do it again. Here we are on our last apple, and this I for this recipe I've ended up using 10 apples, but this is for a 9 by 13 uh, uh, recipe. So if you wanted to only use half and cut the recipe in half, you're free to do that. You just use like an 8 by 8 or a 9 by 9 pan. But that's all you do, you just set your apple slices in there, and then what we're going to do is get rid of all this so that I can put my bowl in front of me. And as you can see, I have my one cup of oats, my one cup of flour, my cup and a half of brown sugar, and I am going to put in one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and one and a half teaspoons of nutmeg. Now, it calls for you to use a tart um, apple and I never go out and buy special apples for this. What I tend to do is to use the apples that are in my refrigerator that might be getting a little older and maybe they're not going to be quite so good for, for eating. Maybe they're looking a little bit, you know, old or whatever. And so what I do, and you don't have to use a fresh lemon, I just have to happen to have fresh lemons, 
is I just cut one in half and I will just sprinkle the lemon juice over these apples then in order to help make them a little more tart. Now in here, as you see, I've mixed up those ingredients. Now we're gonna add our butter. And the butter definitely needs to be brought to room temperature. And because otherwise it's gonna be very difficult for you to mix this in because that's what we're gonna do. We're actually going to mix it in. And you can use a mixer for this. I just tend to use my hands and just kind of blend it in. I just make sure that my butter's gotten really, really soft. But just mix it in. So as you see, it, it, it took a little bit of it took a little bit of mixing, that's for sure. But um, go ahead and feel free to use your your mixer, your hand mixer or your stand mixer. If that's going to make it a little bit easier for you. But and all we do is put this right over top of the apples. Just like so and uh, we are going to bake it at 375 and this is probably because this is um, quite a bit of apples in here is probably going to take about 45 minutes if it was half of this and in an 8 by 8 it would probably take about 30 to 35 minutes it's going to get nice and bubbly and your apples will be tender when you poke it with a fork that's basically how you know and it will get browned on top and I'll show you what that looks like when we Get it out of the oven. Well, doesn't that look yummy? Now, I do have to tell you that this actually took approximately 55 minutes, but that's probably because I used so many apples. It, it really is up to you, you know, how much you want to do. But I ended up covering mine with foil for like the last 10 minutes because I really didn't want it to get any darker than it already was. So that's what I did. And I'm going to get out a bowl. And I'm going to give some to my husband, and we are going to enjoy. And I did want to say that um, I kind of did things backwards today. So when you watch the devotional, you will notice that the sun is shining really bright through my bedroom doors, or windows, I mean. And um, yeah, I wasn't really sure with our schedule and what we had to do and certain things that Rick had to do at church when we would get back. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this devotional out of the way, and that way I'm not like doing this at 10 o'clock at night. So that's why the sun is shining through my bedroom windows as I am doing the devotion. And I hope that you enjoyed the apple crisp, and I encourage you to try it because it is wonderful. You can eat it just like it is, or you can have it with couple scoops of like vanilla ice cream it's just really really yummy especially when it's hot out of the oven so talk to you in a bit I am going to be reading from Philippians chapter 2 verses 19 through 24 and I will be reading from the um, English Standard Version once again I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by the news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. They all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he served with me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. Now, this passage of scripture shows us the example of Timothy who stands for Christ. That is the great need in the church for those who will demonstrate genuine Christian character because it's actually 
what Paul is talking about. You know, several years ago, there was a poll taken, and it produced some statistics that shocked many in the Christian churches. In some ways, the outcome was positive. However, in some ways, the outcome of that poll was very negative. But the poll found that never in the history of America had church attendance ever been so high. And that was the encouraging part. Yet, as we look back over these last few decades, we tend to see the days in the past as a time when church attendance was at an all-time high. Not just these last 10 years. But according to this Gallup poll, never in the history of America was attendance of Christianity as high as it had been in the year 2007. That's when this particular poll was taken. But the second part of that poll revealed the discouraging part. Never in the history of America had church attendance made such little difference. Though many were attending church more than ever before, the problem was the influence from Christians was far less. We have a real problem in the absence of Christian character today. Our scripture in Philippians addressed this problem. We have the example of Timothy, the great servant of God. Paul holds Timothy as an example of someone who stands for Christ, who is willing to make an impact. Timothy is an example of one who stands with Christian character. Here is Timothy, a man who can be trusted. Here is Timothy, a man who shows genuine concern for all those around him. Here is Timothy, a man who is dedicated in his service to Jesus Christ. That is the call for all Christians. That is the great need in the church today for people who will demonstrate genuine Christian character. Remember now, Paul at this time is in prison. And he is writing this letter to the Philippians from prison and is telling them what he plans to do because he, they are worried. Paul was the one who started the church in Philippi. And he is telling them in this letter that Aphrodite will be bringing back the letter to them. In the church of Philippi, Philippi, there is a great problem of disunity and strife. Paul wants to know if this letter is going to make any difference. So he says that later he is going to send Timothy to them. He has no one else like Timothy, a man of great character, to go to them and tell them what the outcome of Paul's trial was. Now, I want to share with you three points in developing Christian character. First, Christian character means genuine concern for others. If you look at verse 20, in our text tonight, it says, For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. Timothy was genuinely interested in the affairs of others, not meddling but in a sense that he was really concerned about their welfare. Christian character means that we become interested about others with a genuine concern. Second, Christian character means you can be trusted. Look at verse 21. They seek their own interests, but not those of Jesus Christ. Paul sends Timothy to Philippi 
for those two reasons. Paul wants Timothy to report the outcome of his trial to the church, and Paul wants Timothy to find out the news about the Philippian church's problems and carry back a report. Paul needs someone he can rely on, so he sends Timothy as his very personal representative. Paul trusted Timothy as his right-hand man. Third, Christian character means dedicated service. Look at verse 22. But you know Timothy's proven worth. Now as a son with a father, he has served with me the gospel. Paul considered Timothy his son in the faith. Timothy sought things of Jesus Christ rather than his own interest. He helped Paul. He helped the interest of the Philippians, and ultimately that was because he was deeply committed to Jesus Christ. When we serve others, it should stem ultimately because of our own commitment to Jesus Christ. Not only should our service be to meet the needs, but also one of the things Christ calls us to is service. When we meet the needs of others, we are serving Jesus Christ. That is what we need to be about, having committed, dedicated service to Jesus Christ. Our commitment, we need to commit ourselves to the service of Christ. There are two things people wrongly think regarding dedicated service. The first thing they say or think is that they're not worthy of God's service. But truthfully, if you could look at the many people that God has used and called to his service throughout history, you would realize you don't have to be talented. You don't have to have a high intellect. You don't have to be strong physically. You just have to be available to be used by God. Timothy was weak physically. Timothy had many physical problems, the Bible teaches us. But he was available to God. The key to service is availability. The other thing that people wrongly think is that it all happens instantly. They think all of a sudden they will exhibit Christian character. We need to remember that this was not the case for Timothy. He spent years with the Apostle Paul. And Timothy was willing to exercise the discipline necessary to bring about Christian character. Did you realize that many years ago there used to be a weight loss program where all you had to do was play a taped message about losing weight while you slept? Yeah, most of us know that it's not going to cause anyone to lose weight. It's not going to happen instantly. And Christian character is not going to happen instantly. It needs to be developed, and it's going to take commitment. So what does this type of commitment look like? First, we must be willing to submit to Jesus Christ and willingly surrender our will to the will of Christ. Second, with faith in Christ, we will stand for Christ and resolve in our heart that we will be the one to stand with impeccable Christian character. And by following the examples of Timothy, we must decide that we are willing to be one of the few who will really stand for Christ. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And let's stand with Christ and willingly stand as an example so that others can see Jesus Christ and then in turn follow him. Good night and God bless.